Today's video, we're going to be purveying the paranormal as we have a look at the new Diamond Select, the real Ghostbusters Egon Spangler. Dr. Egon Spangler was performing psychological research at a large New York City university when his funding was unceremoniously cut, leaving himself and his colleagues Ray Stance and Peter Venkman out of work. However, a close encounter with a phantasm gave the trio the data they needed to catch and contain a supernatural entity, inspiring a new venture, the Ghostbusters. As chief architect for their new ghost detection, trapping, and containment technology, Egon was well versed in what could go wrong if any of the devices were misused, but he was willing to take a massive risk in order to save the city. In his spare time, Egon collects spores, molds, and fungus. This 7-inch action figure is based on the animated series The Real Ghostbusters and features multiple points of articulation as well as accessories and diorama parts. It was designed by Yuri Ming and sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. Before we get a look at the figure, let's first figure out how tall Dr. Egon Spangler is. And we're going to take it right to the very top of his large hair. And stopping the tape measure right there. The figure stands exactly seven and a half inches in height. I didn't technically count the proton wand because that's something you could easily have put into his hand. So we're going to go right to the very top of his head. 7.5 inches. Centimeters, you would be looking at 19.2, almost 20 centimeters tall. Egon comes with several accessories, one of which being a display base part. This is a smaller part to a much larger picture, and this is the fire hall uh, entranceway, the doorway. I'm not really sure what part this specifically is. From what I can tell, this is the front sidewalk. The door would be right here, and then this would be the side of the building. Uh, unfortunately, though, the series was consisting of series 6 to 10 to build, finally, the entire hall opening. Unfortunately, though, if you probably have seen any of my reviews, you'll know that I've sporadically picked up ones that have had ones that had diorama pieces and ones ultimately that did not. So that means, sadly, lone tier. I'm not going to be able to build the diorama set. So in the meantime, we've kind of got just like a flooring as best as I can gauge it. This would be, again, the side of the, the opening here. I'm going to move that aside. I also got this part inside here as well, part of the diorama. Now, I'm looking at this, and I can't understand whereabouts this goes, unless this is supposed to be part of the initial firehouse. Of course, it's taken from a real firehouse, not unless this is a replacement piece that can actually go along the top. That's the only thought that I have, because this doesn't look like anything that's in the picture. We've got a raised elevated star, and then we've got the number eight next to it. There is a clamping point, a little connector point on it. I don't think it's supposed to go like this. I feel like it's probably supposed to go like this, or it's probably supposed to go like this along the very top as potentially a swappable swap out option if you wanted to display the firehouse with this instead of the Ghostbusters logo. Just a possibility. I'm going to move those out of the way. And then we're going to kind of get knee deep into all the other good goodies that come included with Egon. For starters, why don't we look at his go-to, his tried and true, his PKE meter, which does have a more cartoony look, of course, taken from the source material being an animated series. It looks a little bit different, and I have to admit, a little bit more exciting than the movie, the feature film incarnation of the PKE meter. I always thought that the animated real Ghostbusters PKE was a lot more exciting and a little bit more interesting to look at. Kenner, ultimately, because they were, at the time, designing toys based around the original animated feature, an animated series, instead of the, the live-action feature, we, as children, were able to get our, our hands on real Ghostbusters tech versus the movie Ghostbusters technology. So your PK meter would also have been done in blue. Speaking of blue, very nicely painted here in blue with the little side knobs in orange and a lighter blue. 
These are a little on the fragile side. I guess it goes without saying. And then you've got the little scope there featured on the front. I don't know where the licensing starts and stops with Diamond Select, but I would be absolutely thrilled if Diamond Select could create prop replicas based on the real Ghostbusters, something akin to what we would have initially saw with the Kenner lineups back in the 80s. Um, there is a little knob or opening on the under area here where it looks in theory like you could connect it to something. Unfortunately, there's no other additional hosing for uh, Spangler here. There's no place where you can connect this to. I don't know if it, at the last minute they decided not to include a hose, but it does look like something is supposed to be there. Or at the very least, this was supposed to be connected to potentially his belt. Love it. I love, love the look of that. Speaking of loving the look of that, he also comes included with an animated version of the Ghost Trap. Sort of a refined, simplistic, simplified version of the Ghost Trap that we saw from the movie. Here again, painted in all blue, with of course some notable details that you would see in the film version of the Ghost Trap here in the animated version. Nice little buttons and lights and stuff on the side. Uh, it does have the handle. The handle's a little on the warp side because initially getting out of the packaging, I did notice it was a little bent. I could probably heat that just to bring the handle up a little bit. Of course, you've got your pedal here on the side. It doesn't press down or anything like that, but it's also been painted very nicely here in silver and the complementing blue that matches the ghost trap. Yes, there is a peg on the underside, a little peg hole. I'll talk about that in a second. I don't think the intent is really to unravel the hosing that comes from the pedal to the trap. Pulling this away and letting it ravel up again, I feel as if it's going to cause damage to the hose. The hose feels like it's hollow, feels like it's a soft plastic, so I don't know resiliency, how long that, that cord, that tubing is going to last, so I'm not going to continue like to pull it apart and let it ravel up, let it wrap itself up. Talking a little bit about that little connector point, if you take the figure and you spin it around to this fantastic looking uh, proton pack, you'll see there's a little knob, little square peg right there. You can take the ghost trap and you can plug it in. Although when you plug it in, it plugs in on an angle, which is unfortunate, but that's the way it's just connected into place. I don't know if it's, I guess it's supposed to be there, but it's just a shame that when it does plug in, it plugs in on an angle. There's also this little clip right here, which I thought could connect to something. I don't ultimately think it actually connects to anything at all. And we'll talk a little bit more about the Proton Pack in a second. We'll, of course, go through the remaining of his accessories. We'll get his feet, hopefully. To... I do find the figure has a tough time standing. That's not specifically across the board, but I do feel the need to just mention that as well. This is something that we've seen frequently before, used before, is the Proton Stream that would be coming out from the wand. It's been used for the movie tie-in figures, and now Diamond Select has carried that over as well to the real Ghostbusters line as well. Contained, really, is a red stream of plastic and very nice electrical blue energy that's running around it, sort of spiraling like a snake around the tubing here of the Proton Stream. They have also added a little connector point that you can add to the Proton Wand. Show you that in a second. And then as well, Egon comes with a series of gloved hands, things that have made reappearances from the movie tie-in figures. Now, they do come with the little cuffs, so the cuffs can be mixed and matched. So if you decide you want to have Egon Spangler with a pair of gloves, you can certainly do that. I honestly will probably just keep them in this human hands because I feel like he's usually in more human hands in the cartoon than he is actually in gloved hands. But it's nice that they actually give you some options to go with. Once again, the cuffs can easily be removed out. And then uh, he has a series of different gripping, various gripping hands. I kind of wish they could have come with some more flesh-colored hands. So that if you didn't necessarily want to use the gloved hands, you would maybe have two more options. Well, two more extra hands to go with. So let's go ahead and talk about the figure. And there is a lot to talk about. For that, I'm going to start first by taking the ghost trap off because I do feel like that's going to be something that's going to fall off of him while we discuss this fantastic looking figure. Now, Diamond Select, of course, no strangers to Ghostbusters. They've done the movie tie-in figures for a very long time and continuing to expand that as we speak. 
Yes, we're still going to have a look at those on this channel as well. I'm a little behind when it comes to the movie figures, but rest assured those reviews will be coming soon. All in, in all honesty, though, as much as I am thrilled that we are still continuing to get movie Ghostbusters, I think I'm actually a little bit more excited for the fact that we're getting ourselves real Ghostbusters. This is not something that any child growing up would ever imagine now as an adult to be seeing. A fully realized, now fully articulated version of the real Ghostbusters Egon Spangler. And yet, feast your eyes on it. The proof is in the pudding. And Diamond Select has not really done a bang-up job. Now, I know that the debated problem with a lot of these figures, the discussions in place, if you will, when these images first surfaced was the fact that the figures may have looked a little bit more realistic than their cartoon counterparts. I think it's a nice fine line that Diamond Select has kind of uh, balanced in between, like having it look very cartoony and very realistic. And with it being a Ghostbusters cartoon figure, you sort of have to kind of tread the middle of that. You obviously don't want to have them too cartoony, and you certainly don't want to have them too realistic. I think they've met a nice middle mark here with the figures that they've produced so far. So far, we've only gotten ourselves Egon, Winston, and Slimer. So as for his face, I think it's a really nice looking recreation of Egon Spangler from the show. Of course, his very large hairstyle here is featured complete with what looks to be a rat tail or very long hair at the back. One would be one would have the toughest time trying to describe this hairstyle to anybody. Certainly would be more of an exaggerated look to what we would have seen with Harold Ramis in Ghostbusters. More importantly, Ghostbusters 2, he had the much bigger hairstyle. I like the head sculpt quite a bit here. Got a little bit of paint, unfortunately, on the forehead. It's not enough to be a, certainly a deal breaker. The glasses, they opted not to give him glass, the actually glasses in the frames, which I think is a smarter route to go because you, it's easier to make out his eyes. He's kind of got more a surprise look on his face, coming across maybe a spook or a spectral that maybe they have not encountered before, and I do think that the face sculpt is quite good on this guy. Flesh tone is sort of a more warmer tone than what we've seen before. Um, the hands also, like, he does have a little bit more of a tan featuring here. The body mold is something that's carried over from the original Ghostbusters. The, the legs, the torso, and, and whatnot have all been carried over. What has changed, though, is things like elbow pads. I think these elbow pads are slightly a little bit different than the ones we had gotten before. Um, the boots also something is carried over. Although I do feel like the silver have been added to these, which look a little bit more like they did in the cartoon. The colorings are faithful, and I think uh, blues and stuff like here match accurately to what they look like in the show. Of course, with each of the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, that is, their uniforms would vary in colors, ranging from browns to blues, and then, of course, uh, uh, I think Egon Winston had a lighter color, like a reddish color. No, he had a blue color. Egon had blue color. Uh, Ray had a beige color, I believe, and Peter had a brown color. Of course, this will work its way out in the wash when we eventually have a look at the figures. Speaking a little bit about his proton pack, his proton pack, like I said, is a little bit more of a simplified look of what he initially had in the, in the movie. Here, all blue. Boy, looking at this, it certainly makes me think, I wish I could have gotten my hands on the proton pack from the Kenner line. Something else that, unfortunately, I just didn't get a chance to get when they were first circulating. But I remember them very vividly at my local Kmart. By the way, a nice little Ghostbusters patch there on his shoulder. I want to talk a little bit about the Proton Wand. This is one of my favorite aspects of this figure because it's very faithfully recreated here in plastic form. I like the bulkier nature of the Proton Wands in the animated series than I did in the movie. It just looked a little bit more like something fun that a kid would want to be picking up and playing with. You've got this spiraling, once again, of the silver tubing that's running from the base of the Proton Wand all the way out to the very tip. Some lights and buttons there, very nicely colored. Um, it is attached by a plastic tube in the same way that the Ghost Trap has, although this one's a little bit thicker. Uh, once again, I am a little worried. It does seem to have a lot of bend and give to it. And hopefully it's not going to develop stress marks, especially where I'm thinking is connecting right here. It looks like it's actually not connected to the end. Instead, it looks like it's inside the handle. 
maybe this is one thing that they thought of and they tried to come up with a solution so that it wouldn't essentially down the road fray as you were bending this back and forth. It does connect. Now, it, there's this little connector point on the top. I know what you're thinking. Looking at this, this looks like it's brittle plastic. It's actually slightly softer plastic, and that's actually a good thing, because if you were to take the proton wand, and when you attach it, you generally want to attach it to like right around here or right below. I notice in the images that the handle area of the proton wand sticks a little bit further up. My my initial plan was to have it right here, which I guess is probably the, still the best place because the handle is sticking up. It's enough for him to reach back, pull off the proton wand, and then use it. At times, though, banging it, it seems very easily to, uh, to, hang, to fall out of that little clip. I can't think of a way that they could have fixed it because if they had made the clamp a little further inward, it would be a lot more difficult to take the proton wand off, and you would run the risk of this this potentially breaking so they had to give it enough of a clearance that you can still get your proton wand attached to it and it would still be very easy to remove put back on remove put back on rinse and repeat uh, paint on this guy is really quite clean don't have any real issues with the paint other than I guess that one little hiccup that's happening right at the top there Somebody I'm sure will be asking, can you take the Proton Pack off? Based on currently where I'm standing on this review, I'm gonna say no. The straps are removable, or in the sense that they can not slide off his shoulders, but there's still that problem with the belt here. I don't see a place where it can detach. There may be a connector point right underneath all that, but I don't wanna risk pulling it or trying to fish behind it in case I accidentally break the strap. So I'm gonna go ahead on a limb and say, the Proton Pack is not removable. You could try to take it off if you want. I'm not gonna try that myself because again, it doesn't look like, from what I can see, any place where the Proton Pack, at least from the belt area, can detach from itself. This isn't snapped or anything like that. One thing I kind of would have loved to see, which would then be immediately dismissed based on what I just, just finished saying, I would love to have seen them do a Kenner replacement Proton Pack something that could fit onto the back. It's not so much the Proton Pack, I suppose, but if they had given us a, a, the wand, kind of looking like the old Ghostbusters line, where you could have actually swiveled, spun the end, and it would have given you the Proton Stream spinning. It would have been a nice little nod to the Kenner stuff, but I, again, I would see a tough time, a tough difficulty with how they would be able to replace that out, and that would only really be nodding like the 80s fans of the original Kenner line. Once again, I do have a problem with him standing a little bit. I think it's just the way, it's just the nature of the way I've got him currently standing. The feet, this one foot is a little loose. That may be what's causing a lot of the difficulty getting him to properly stand. But we'll look through his posability and then we'll wrap up the rest of this review. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down and technically it swivels left and right. Not by a lot though. His arms hinge outward as well. You can rotate them all the way around. He has a bend in the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate. His hands also rotate, and they hinge back and forth, being the way that they are attached. You can see right there to the, the hand is attached to the peg. He has an upper torso ball joint. He has a lower torso waist swivel. Legs split out. Legs go forward. Legs go back. He has a mid swivel cut on the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. Uh, his feet do not swivel. However, he does have a hinge back and forth on the foot. He doesn't have toe articulation. I guess I don't necessarily say that that's a requirement. Toe articulation cer certainly would have come in handy, but uh, the figure again, the issue isn't that so much that's causing him to not stand properly. I think it's just because there's one foot here, as you can see, just teeters a little bit back and forth on the limb of being a little on the loose side. Lastly, just before we wrap up this review, I want to show you that the Proton Wand, oh, we got to be careful we don't bend it. This is something else I wanted to talk about as well. This is very soft. Putting weight on it, as I just did, you don't want to certainly do that. Hold on to it here when you are attaching the Proton Stream. Last thing you certainly would not want to do is break that. And again, he can hold the Proton Wand with the Proton Stream intact. You probably would want to have him holding it with both hands, however. And just to show you that it does attach in place. Likely, I think for Egon, 
I'm more inclined, I think, to probably display the Proton Wand attached to the pack, and I'll probably display him with the PKE meter. The rest of the Ghostbusters, I'm sure, will come with their fair share of accessories. It's going to be interesting to see what we get with like the various different uh, Ghostbuster members. Uh, I'm sure they're going to come with Proton packs. That's an obvious given. They're going to come likely with like Proton, like with Ghost Traps. But it's going to be interesting to see what the other characters come with. So far, at the time of this review, I'm still trying to get this guy to stand properly. Stay there. It's his foot. It's his one foot that's causing the problem. I almost even feel like the knee isn't properly bent. Stay right there. Stay. Okay. One thing I'm really super excited for, providing Egon doesn't topple over on me, is not so much even just the Ghostbusters team. I'm thrilled for the fact that we get ourselves new, new real Ghostbuster figures. I'm hoping that Diamond Select is also going to give us some Ghostbuster ghosts, which any fan of the real Ghostbusters will know, as good as the show was for having the Ghostbusters, one of the unique aspects of it that the movie didn't get a chance to really play into was the different designs and the neat-looking characters that inhabited the real Ghostbusters world, at least from the ghost standpoint. Now, I have no psychic abilities, not that I'm aware of, but I do foresee a problem with this figure down the road. Displaying him currently, just in this review, I did find that Egon Spangler had loose ankles. I'm wondering if this is a lot of it can be contributed to the fact that we're reusing molds that we've seen in previous figures. Of course, the molds themselves have been carried over from the movie property Ghostbuster figures, so I'm hoping that loose ankles are only going to be the problem on my figure and not across the board. If you picked up this figure for yourself, let me know if you have similar issues with getting the figures to properly stand. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about negative aspects about this figure. Let's talk about the positives, which I think greatly outnumber the negatives. I love this figure. Granted, yes, it's making use of the same mold that we've seen with previous Ghostbuster figures, but that's okay. I don't think it necessarily has to have a brand new mold designated for this specific subcategory. The Ghostbuster, real Ghostbusters Egon Spangler is a beautiful sight. Almost kind of a little bit of realistic, but still very much heavy into the Ghostbuster cartoon universe. I think Diamond Select has done a good job of kind of balancing, kind of running the line in between the two. So it didn't look too cartoony, but it didn't look too realistic either. It, I think they found a nice happy medium. What I'm super excited for as well is the future of the real Ghostbusters property. I hope it's going to expand beyond just the, of course, the initial four characters. Maybe a Janine, I'm sure, will make her way into the, the mix. We've already gotten Slimer. Slimer was part of this first wave, which is a nice touch, Diamond Select, to include a ghost as the first wave figure so that we can kind of get a feel for what you have in store for us for future figures. But that's the thing. That's the key. I'm hoping we get future Ghostbusters, real Ghostbusters figures in the pipeline. I want to see some ghosts make their way into the mix. Sam Hain, for example, the Sandman, or the one I'm really looking forward to seeing is the Boogeyman. I think if they had managed to do a Boogeyman in the same way as what they're doing with Slimer that we're going to look at in a future video, I'm pretty certain that the property of the real Ghostbusters is in the right hands with Diamond Select. They've guaranteed us and shown us their dedication level when it comes to the movie tie-in figures. I hope they're going to have that same dedication when it comes to the real Ghostbusters line as well. This is answering a wish list that I've had on in the back of my mind for the longest of times. I grew up with the Kenner Ghostbusters. I grew up with the real Ghostbusters. And I always hoped that there would be a company that to take the reins, if you will, from the initial Kenner line and give us something current with more articulation, more accessories, but still very much in the same vein, the same realm as the animated cartoon. And so far, I'm pretty happy with what we're getting from Diamond Select. I can't wait to have a look at the other two figures coming soon to this channel. And we're going to have a look at the other two figures, which is actually Winston Zedmore and Slimer. They're both slated. I'm going to get the reviews done of those as quickly as I possibly can. And rest assured, you guys will be seeing those very soon. If you guys want to, by the way, to pick this one up for yourself, the good news is Real Ghostbusters Egon, Winston, and Slimer are all currently in comic book stores and retail stores if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself.
If you also wanted to go back and have a look at some of my other Ghostbusters reviews, there's playlists for that. And make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. More videos, guys, will be coming away. Like I said, sort of kind of gave it away, but we're going to be having a look at Winston Zedmore and Slimer from the real Ghostbusters lineup, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.